Okay, good morning. Today's session, I will be discussing about the stresses induced on oblique planes due to uniaxial stresses. Due to uniaxial stresses. So, in the previous topics, uh, such as simple stresses, what we have seen is the direct stresses we have seen direct compression or direct tension. For example, in the body A, B, C, D, the stresses develop due to axial pull P on the faces A, B and C, D for example or any other section perpendicular to the axis is P by A. The stress induced is P by A and this stress is normal stress. Normal to the cross section. Okay. On the normal mm, cross sections, what is the stress induced due to the axial compression or tension? For example, if you consider some inclined plane, a1, B1, for example. Then, what will be the stresses induced on this? What will be the stresses induced on this due to this uh, axial force? Uniaxial, we are considering here. That means, uh, uh, forces in one direction only. Later, we will see biaxial laws. Forces acting along two mutually perpendicular directions. Okay. So, uh, for this, uh, we consider the cross section because most uh, of the in majority of the engineering problems uh, will be coming coming across complex stresses. Okay, complex state of stresses, which involves uh, tensile, compressive as well as uh, shear stresses also. Okay. Because this oblique planes, oblique planes are subjected to normal stress as well as shear stress. The normal stress may be compressive or tensile, depending on the state of stresses, given state of stresses. Okay. So the normal stress and tangential stress on the plane which is inclined at uh, an angle theta with the vertical or with horizontal, it does not matter. Okay. So, what will be the state uh, stresses developed on the stresses acting on the oblique plates that we will see in this uh, session. Okay. Yeah. For that, uh, uh, consider some basic definitions here. The principal stresses, the principal stresses are the maximum or uh, minimum normal stresses acting on a plane where the shear stresses are zero. As we have seen, on an inclined plane, you will have shear stress and normal stress. Is it? So, the principal stresses are maximum and minimum normal stresses acting on a plane where the shear stresses are zero. So, on an oblique plane on which the shear stress is zero, the stresses acting are called principal stresses. Okay. The maximum stress and minimum stress acting on an oblique plane. The condition is shear stress on that plane is zero. In that case, the stresses are called principal stresses. Okay. And the principal planes are those planes on which the shear stress is zero. Okay. The principal planes are those on which the shear stresses are zero. So, you will have two mutually perpendicular planes 
on which you will have no shear stress okay uh, the two principal planes you will have okay on which the shear stress is zero and the stresses acting on this planes are called principal stresses okay so how to find the uh, uh, location of uh, the inclination of principal planes okay uh, that also we will see here okay and for uh, finding out the stresses on an oblique plane of a body we have two different methods analytical and graphical analytical method as well as graphical method we will see both we will discuss both first we will be discussing this analytical method okay analytical method for finding out the stresses on an oblique section of a body okay and here the body which is subjected to direct stress in one direction uniaxial and direct stresses in two mutually perpendicular directions that is biaxial so uniaxial case is this one sigma and biaxial is this one. okay this comes under biaxial and this comes under uniaxial so first we will see the case of body subjected to uniaxial stresses after it we will discuss biaxial stresses also so in case of body which is subjected to uniaxial stresses the sign conventions also um, we will see here uh, direct uh, the sign conventions different from uh, different authors will follow different sign conventions okay tensile stresses and strains are taken positive in general and compressive stresses and strains are taken negative okay that all will follow the same okay we will follow the same okay in case of shear stresses uh, which tends to rotate the element okay in the clockwise direction is taken as positive and that tends to rotate an uh, uh, element in anti clockwise direction is taken as uh, negative okay okay for example these two stresses which tend to rotate the element in clockwise direction so they are positive okay and the other two are negative because they tend to rotate in anti clockwise direction they are taken negative now let us see the case of a body which is subjected to direct stresses in x direction say for example in one direction on one plane okay so the stress acting on uh, the plane perpendicular to the x direction let this be x direction okay so the planes perpendicular to x direction will be subjected to a tensile stress of sigma okay so the stress is acting on the vertical plane okay so on ac you will have direct tensile stress sigma okay on the vertical section ac you will have direct tensile stress sigma now consider an oblique section ab that is this one 
which is inclined at an angle theta with horizontal okay so on this section what will be the on this cross section what will be the stresses acting on uh, this okay because this is not perpendicular so on this you will have the stresses sigma acting in x direction okay acting in x direction so what this stress can be uh, resolved along the perpendicular direction to this inclined plane also along the tangential direction okay so the stress which is along the normal perpendicular is normal stress and the stress which is along the tangent uh, along the plane is shear stress which is uh, denoted by tau or sometimes uh, sigma t tangential stress okay so how will you get the normal stress and tangential stress acting along the plane ab acting along the plane ab which is inclined at an angle theta with horizontal okay so yeah sigma is the tensile stress acting and theta is the angle which the oblique section makes with the horizontal okay that is with the x direction understand so uh, consider this equilibrium of a wedge shaped element here equilibrium of this on which we have on plane ac we have sigma and on plane ab you will have normal stress as well as tangential stress tau normal stress sigma n and tangential stress tau okay so the horizontal force acting on the surface ac the section ac the force acting on ac is given as stress multiplied by area so area means here we are considering the dimension ac and one unit perpendicular to the plane of the say plane of this okay so perpendicular to this uh, we will consider one unit so ac into one actually area one unit uh, unit uh, dimension perpendicular to the plane so the force acting on the face ac in horizontal direction is given as stress multiplied by area sigma into ac which is acting towards left towards left okay and resolving the force perpendicular and or normal to the section ab okay perpendicular or normal to the section ab so what is uh, force pn this yeah uh, force we consider now which is sigma into ac okay yeah we consider this p this angle is theta so this angle will be theta okay so we can resolve this force along the normal and along the tangent what is the component uh, along the normal that is p n is p sin theta p sin theta or cos this angle will be 90 minus theta p cos 90 minus theta or p sin theta that is a normal component and tangential component is p cos theta p cos theta okay pn is p 
p cos theta and in terms of uh, uh, stresses what is p sigma into area of cross section okay stress into area of cross section okay that is sigma into ac into sin theta similarly pt is p cos theta where p is sigma ac cos theta sigma ac cos theta okay where sigma is the stress along x direction along x direction okay so normal stress is normal force divided by area of uh, normal force divided by area of that uh, section ab inclined section okay normal force divided by area of the inclined plane ab here p is equal to what is p sigma ac it has p sigma ac and what is normal stress now pn by area of this ab and into 1 because we consider unit dimension perpendicular to the plane of the body understand so normal stress is equal to pn by ab and tangential stress tau is equal to pt by ab pt by ab so consider this normal stress is pn by ab and replace pn with sigma ac sin theta divided by ab okay sigma ac sin theta divided by ab and coming to this what is ac by ab in this triangle ac by ab Uh, sin theta is ac by ab is it right in this triangle sin theta is ac by ab opposite side and hypotenuse okay similarly cos theta is bc by ab bc by ab so we can replace ac by ab by sin theta so it becomes sigma sin square theta and this can be taken as 1 minus cos 2 theta sin square theta is taken as 1 minus cos 2 theta by 2 okay so sigma n normal stress acting on inclined plane ab is sigma by 2 into 1 minus cos 2 theta we can split this also like this okay generally we express this way sigma by 2 into 1 minus cos 2 theta or sigma sin square theta that is the normal stress acting on oblique section ab similarly the shear stress tangential stress acting on ab okay so what is the tangential stress tangential force divided by area tangential force pt divided by ab into 1 1 unit will consider isn't it so what is tangential force p sin theta p sin theta that is sigma ac sin theta okay sigma ac um, sorry p cos theta this is p cos theta sigma ac this is cos theta okay and ac by ab is replaced with sin theta ac by ab is sin theta from this triangle from this triangle ac by ab is equal to sin theta so we will have shear stress tau is equal to sigma cos theta sin theta sigma 
this is sin theta and cos theta, isn't it? Sigma sin theta cos theta. And what is sin theta cos theta? Sin 2 theta by 2. So the tangential stress is given by this expression. Sigma by 2 sin 2 theta. And normal stress is sigma by 2 into 1 minus cos 2 theta. So these are the normal stress and tangential stress acting on inclined section which is inclined at an angle theta with the horizontal or x direction. Okay. So in a body subjected to uniaxial stress sigma the stress is acting on an inclined plane which makes an angle theta with the direction of uh, stress direction of stress the normal and tangent stresses are given by these two expressions sigma n normal stress is sigma by 2 into 1 minus cos 2 theta and tangential stress sigma by 2 into sin 2 theta sigma by 2 into sin 2 theta okay so this is the case of uh, uniaxial stresses okay and we can uh, draw some conclusions here for example so the normal stress across the section ab will be maximum so normal stress is given as sigma by 2 into 1 minus cos 2 theta isn't it so when will this be maximum or this is also written as sin square theta isn't it so for sin square theta maximum because sigma is given given stress and normal stress will be maximum for uh, maximum value of sin square theta. So, what is the maximum value of sin square theta? 1. That is sin theta is 1. Theta is pi by 2 or 90 degrees. Okay. So, the normal stress will be maximum on a plane which is inclined at 90 degrees. What does that mean? So, when the section is coinciding with uh, when AB theta 90 and over when AB coincides with AC, isn't it? AB coincides with AC. That means when the section is perpendicular to the direction of stress. In that case, we will have maximum normal stress on this plane. Similarly, the shear stress will be maximum. What is the shear stress uh, tau sigma by 2 sin 2 theta? And this will be maximum when sin 2 theta is maximum. Okay. And what is the maximum value of sin 2 theta? 1 only. So 2 theta will be 90 or 270 for which sin 2 theta is 1. <coughs> 1 or minus 1. Okay. So if uh, 2 theta is 90, then theta will be 45. If 2 theta is uh, 75, then theta will be 270 theta will be 135. So, what does this mean? So, the shear stress tau will be maximum on a plane which is inclined at 45 degrees to the direction of uh, 45 degrees to the direction of stress sigma or x direction or 135 degrees. 45 degrees are 135 degrees. Okay. It is clear. Yeah, 45 or 
On these two planes, you will have maximum shear stress. Okay. So, maximum on the planes inclined at 45 and 135 with the line of action of the tensile stresses. Tensile stresses. And what is the maximum value of tensile stress, uh, shear stress, tau maximum? Sigma by 2. Maximum value of uh, shear stress is sigma by 2 because sin theta, sin 2 theta is 1. For maximum shear stress, sin 2 theta is 1. That is, sigma by 2 is the maximum shear stress. Similarly, when it is uh, 270, then also it is sigma by 2. Shear stress is maximum on the planes inclined at 45 degrees and 135 degrees with the line of action of uh, stress. And the resultant stress. What is the resultant stress and its direction? You can find. This is sigma n on any plane will be having both shear stress as well as normal stress, isn't it? The resultant of these two will be given by this square root of sigma n square plus tau square. And its direction with the normal stress alpha, there is sine al or tan alpha is equal to tau by sigma yeah. tau by sigma. Okay. Or with this, you call it alpha one. Tan alpha 1 inclination with uh, shear stress. Inclination of resultant with shear stress is sigma n by tau. Okay. And the planes of maximum or minimum normal stresses are known as principal planes. Okay. So, we can find the location of this principal planes by equating shear stresses to 0. By equating shear stresses to 0. Because on principal planes, the shear stresses are 0. Okay. So, equating shear stress to 0, you will get the direction of principal planes. Okay. The direction of principal planes. And here you observe the shear stress term is given as sigma sin theta cos theta, isn't it? So, when you equate this to 0, either sin theta is equal to 0 or cos theta is equal to 0, isn't it? So, when sin theta is 0, theta will be 0, okay? When sin theta is 0, then theta will be 0. So, in other words, the plane coincides with the line of action of the tensile stress. Similarly, if cos theta is 0, then theta is equal to 90. Theta is equal to 90. And the plane at right angles to the line of action of the tensile stress. Theta 90 means the plane at right angles to the tensile stress. That means here you will have two principal planes. One 
is along the uh, direction of uh, that means uh, you consider this here a c uh, a b c is not it so a c is one plane that means here theta is 90 when cos theta is equated to 0 so this is one principal plane what is the other principal plane b c because on b c the shear stress will be 0 that means when theta is 0 the plane will be par parallel to the stress tensile stress ok so thus we see that there are two principal planes at right angles to each other ok one of them coincides with the line of action of the stress the other at right angles to it so one plane coincides or will be along the line of action and the other plane is perpendicular to the line of action of the stress ok that is clear from this because this gives two planes on which the shear stress is 0 one for sin theta 0 one for cos theta 0 sin theta is 0 means theta 0 cos theta 0 means theta 90 that means angle between these two planes is 90 so two principal planes will have on which the shear stresses are 0 and the normal stresses will be maximum on one plane and minimum on the other plane ok so uh, this is the case of uniaxial stresses so what we have seen here in a body subjected to uniaxial stress in a body subjected to uniaxial stress we have normal stress acting on an inclined plane oblique plane and tangential stress acting on this plane ok the normal stress represented as sigma m tangential stress represented by tau so we have seen the expressions for normal stress as sigma by 2 into 1 minus cos 2 theta or sigma sin square theta also and um, tangential stress or shear stress tau as sigma by 2 sin 2 theta or sigma sin theta cos theta ok so these are the expressions we have derived and what conclusions we have made by equating tau 0 that means sin theta is 0 or cos theta is 0 this gives theta 0 this gives theta 90 that means we have two planes perpendicular to each other on which the shear stress is 0 which are also known as principal planes so we will have two principal planes which are at right angles ok which are at right angles and what will be the maximum um, shear stress and the plane on which the maximum shear stress will be acting this is for maximum value of sin 2 theta sin 2 theta is 1 or theta is uh, 45 because 2 theta is 90 theta is 40 so when theta is 45 on this plane you will have maximum shear stress ok and what is the maximum normal stress when sin square theta is maximum that is 1 and maximum shear stress is sigma maximum normal stress is sigma maximum shear stress is sigma by 2 maximum shear stress is sigma by 2 maximum normal stress is sigma ok so these are the conclusions we have made ok yeah, let us see one example 
a wooden ball is subjected to a tensile stress of 5 megapascals 5 newton per mm square what will be the values of normal and shear stresses across a section which makes an angle of 25 degrees with the direction of tensile stress okay so it is direct problem direct substitution okay so what is given is a wooden bar you can see the figure yeah. wooden bar subjected to a tensile stress of 5 megapascals okay so what is the normal stress acting on this plane which is inclined at 25 de uh, degrees is it 25 at uh, 25 degrees with the direction of tensile stress 25 degrees with this direction okay so direct substitution here normal stress is uh, sigma by 2 into 1 minus cos 2 theta you can substitute directly here or you can use sigma sin square theta anything is okay so you'll be getting it as 0.89 newton per mm square similarly shear stress sigma by 2 sin 2 theta sigma by 2 sin 2 theta so by direct substitution you'll get sigma is 5 sigma is here 5 the tensile stress acting theta is 25 degrees this is newton per mm square so the shear stress acting on this plane the shear stress tau and normal stress sigma l sigma l is 0.89 and shear stress is 1.915 newton per mm square so direct substitution the problem Okay. Another example we will see. A tension a tension member is formed by connecting two wooden members, 200 mm by 100 mm. Okay. As shown in the figure. Determine the safe value of the force if the permissible normal stress and shear stresses in the joint or 5.5 uh, newton per mm square and 1.25 newton per mm square so permissible normal stress sigma n maximum permissible stress is 0.5 newton per mm square and tau maximum is 1.25 mega pascal so newton per mm square so this is the joint okay so what will be the so what you have to find safe value of uh, the force p what will be the safe value of the force p so here two limits are given normal stress and shear stress so we have to first find the safe value based on normal stress limiting normal stress and say p1 and we will find p2 safe value of p based on permissible shear stress and the least of these two will be the safe value safe load that can be applied okay so based on mm, normal stress uh, for, for before that uh, we see this area of cross section is 200 into 100 20000 mm square so based on normal stress condition which is given as uh, sigma sin square theta 
What is theta here? 60. Sigma sine square theta. Okay. Sigma is here. P by A. Sigma is P by A. And sine square 60. And its value is 0.5. Maximum value of a sigma n is 0.5. So this gives P as 0.67 Newton per mm square, the sigma value. Sigma value is obtained, sigma means this one. Sigma is obtained as 0.67 Newton per mm square. Similarly, based on shear stress condition, what is shear stress condition? Yeah, tau is equal to, tau maximum is equal to sigma by 2 sine 2 theta. Okay? Yeah, this gives 2 into tau maximum is 1.25 by sine 2 into theta. So, this gives uh, sigma as 2.89, 2.89 Newton per mm square. So, the least value is this one. So, using this stress, we will find out P, okay, 0 0.67 into area, okay, that is 1.34 into 10 cube Newtons or, um, sorry, 1.34 13.4 into 10 cube newtons or 13.4 kilometers. So the safe load based on limiting normal stress is least. Okay. The load based on limiting normal stress allowable normal stress is the least. So, this will be taken as the safe load because based on this P will be greater. Okay, the least will be taken as the safe load. So, the safe load that can be applied is 13.4 kilo newtons. Okay, yeah. yeah, that's all for now. Thank you. We will discuss some more examples in the next session. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.